MG4L, my gang for life. Yeah, tell them. I get it now. Uh -huh. My gang for uh -huh. life. Uh -huh. my we're tracking a developing story from the streets right now. A police chase has ended in a crash and three arrests after officers received calls that shots have been fired in the downtown core. Yeah, do this shit so they can make music and yeah, they, 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 so they can rap about it. No, brother, it's not like that, brother. It's, mm. uh, we live what we rap about. What can I do? approaching another man on River Street near Girard just before 1 o'clock Wednesday morning. Now, one of the men can be seen pulling out a gun and appears to pull the trigger, but the gun doesn't fire. Baby girl, I want to know the reason. Every time you see me with my money, you be preying. We was turning up in the scene, man. So you started fucking with the gang. Sharif Mohammed, better known by his stage name Casper the Neighborhood Ghost, is a rapper and songwriter from Toronto. He gained recognition in the city's underground rap scene with his unique melodic style that blends elements of drill, trap, and street rap. His younger brother Kareem Allah Muhammad, otherwise known as K-Money, is also a fellow rapper and certified hitmaker. He is best known for his record, Come Outside, which captivated the ears of rap fanatics from Toronto to Europe. Aside from being known for their musical talents, the scene labeled the brothers as crash outs after they engaged in a wild high-speed chase across Toronto's downtown core during the peak of their success. We'll get into that later. But I think it's safe to say the brothers probably have the wildest come up out of anyone from the six. Come on, y'all. Too bad to be true. Let's bust this too. One, two, three. The story of Casper and K-Money's musical prowess begins with their father Jeremy Robinson, a.k.a. Lyric J. As a member of the Toronto-based teenage hip-hop group, too bad to be true, Lyric J experienced a decent level of success in the music industry at a very early age. His group released an album in 1993 titled One Track Mind, which won an award for Rap Recording of the Year at the 1994 Juno Awards. The group received significant airplay on the Canadian music network Much Music, but consistent with the commercial struggles faced by Canadian hip-hop at the time, they received almost no commercial radio airplay in Canada outside of the Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal markets. And so, the group only lasted five years and disbanded by 1995. Fortunately for Lyric J, his musical capabilities would be passed on to his sons Casper, who was born the following year on March 4th, and K Money, who was born three years later on September 15th. The Mohammed brothers spent their formative years in North America's first and oldest community housing project, Regent Park, where they got accustomed to the fast-paced lifestyle of downtown Toronto fairly quickly. Casper spent much of his adolescence playing sports. He participated in track competitions, but his true passion was basketball. By the 10th grade, he was regarded as one of the best shooters in the greater Toronto area. On basketball forums dating back more than a decade, his name was brought up along the likes of current NBA star Dylan Brooks and Canada's best 8th grade hooper back in 2011, Jamar Ergas. By 2012, however, Casper's family life began to wither. First his parents divorced, then his grandmother, whom he was close with, passed away. These significant life events marked a change in his attitude and behavior as he began to struggle emotionally. In order to cope, he started to abuse drugs. This caused him to develop negative peer associations and drop out of high school, which ultimately ended his hoop dreams. At this point, his only form of escape was through music, so in the summer of 2012, he created his first YouTube channel and began uploading covers of artists he admired as well as his own songs. Nigga don't be scared and the girls flock my class Cause my swag is up three years Bitch I'm 15, big dream She say she wants some money for some clothes Bitch please, swag to the 15 You don't know what's in store But you know what you're here for Casper was clearly talented, but after his family relocated to the gang-ridden block known as Alexandra Park in the late 2000s, him and K-Money were fully immersed into the streets by their teenage years. Not long after arriving, they joined Menace Gang, a subset crew of the infamous Project Originals. They originate out of Atkinson Co-op, a housing project where the Mohammed family lived. The since-revitalized housing unit is also home to another notoriously violent crew called the Asian Assassins. 
What started off as a small group of 14 to 15 year old Chinese Canadian males later expanded to about three dozen members by the early 2000s and according to Toronto police, they were deeply tied in with the project originals and both were involved in a long list of criminal activities. From home invasions and contract killings to the importing and trafficking of firearms and illegal drugs, both the Asian assassins and project originals were well versed in the city's criminal underworld. I see the police around, when I see the police around, I know there's going to be a raid. At Alexander Park, neighbors have seen gangs come and go. The presence of the Asian assassins, now known as the Project Originals, can be found in the housing complex near Dundas and Spadina. I've seen shootings, I've seen people being stabbed, I've seen a lot going on. There's been gangs in and out, there's been prostitution, we've had it all. The rapid growth of the Project Originals and Asian Assassins caught the eye of other downtown gangs, specifically the Chin Pack and Sick Thugs. Based out of Regent Park, the allied Chin Pack and Sick Thugs didn't appreciate the Alexandra Park crews conducting business in their territory, but the Asian Assassins and Project Originals weren't hearing them out. They kept conducting business as usual, which became the catalyst for the storied Regent Park and Alexandra Park rivalry. Not long after joining Menace Gang, a subset of Project Originals, Casper racked up a lengthy criminal record. According to court documents, Casper's first run-in with the law happened in 2013, when he was arrested for robbery after ripping a girl's phone out of her hands. With that being his first offense, he was spared jail time and even went on to release a music video right after. Although that track barely gained any traction, everything changed a year later when he dropped his first viral song, Dope Boy. The thing about life is you can't live it twice. So if you gon' have you a hoe for your wife, I'm telling you nigga, you ain't living right. And every the hit record not only earned Casper his first gold plaque, but it certified him as one of Toronto's rising rap stars. Shortly after Dope Boy was released, Casper went on to perform at his first show and sit down for his first interview with videographer Huss. So yo, who, who, who's Casper? Where do you get that name from? Casper, I'm just a ghost, man. Sometimes you see me, sometimes you don't. Sometimes... Casper now had the attention of the city's niche rap scene, but he didn't release any more projects until 2016 after being hit with a number of charges for a string of violent incidents. The first one happened on July 3rd, 2015, when he was involved in a swarming of a rival gang member. The unidentified individual was stabbed and suffered a cracked rib. Casper was charged with robbery, aggravated assault, and conspiracy to commit an indictable offense. Then in December that same year, Casper was wrongly imprisoned for 15 days on robbery and firearm charges. These charges were dropped and removed from his record when someone else pleaded guilty to the charges against him. After being let off the hook, he took the opportunity to take music more seriously. On January 29, 2016, he released the single, No Me. The hit record amassed over 3 million views within a year of its release, which is incredibly impressive considering how small the city's rap scene was at the time. Then, on March 19, K Money made his debut with the song Up. The raw visuals, coupled with K-Money's unique melodic style, had fans wanting more, so he delivered again a month later with the hit, Dat As the brothers started gaining traction, their success came with a price. Simply put, they were becoming name brands, meaning their ops were more likely to target them due to their high notoriety. Take a look at what unfolded during the spring of 2016 and you'll begin to understand what being a name brand in Toronto entails. That's Simba the tabby cat. He was the only one home last night. His owner was out when three bullets were fired into her front door, one of them striking Simba in the stomach. The cat was taken to a veterinary clinic for treatment, but uh, I've just learned the cat did have to be euthanized. On May 29, 2016, Casper and Kay Money's mother reported someone shot into her residence, killing the family cat. This was just the latest of at least five shootings her home had to endure in recent years. She lived at the home with five of her children, not including Casper and Kay Money. The brothers, who had lived there for years, moved in with their father after rocks were thrown at their home months prior to this recent shooting. A week and a half later on June 9th, Toronto police executed a search warrant at 150 Dan Leckie Way, believing Casper and K Money were using the residence as a stash house. Inside the residence, officers found a firearm. Casper was subsequently charged and sentenced to six months of probation for failing to comply with the conditions of his release. 
Kay Money was also arrested, but for a separate incident and ended up having to serve jail time. With his brother locked up, Casper decided to keep their momentum going on his own. Throughout the remainder of 2016, he stayed out of trouble and remained consistent with his music. He released a new song every month until December and slowly but surely, that momentum Casper and K Money once had grew into something they probably didn't expect. With some going as far as dubbing it the year of Casper and K Money, 2017 was a huge stepping stone for not just the brothers, but Toronto's music scene as a whole. Song after song, hit after hit, it appears the duo prioritized quality over quantity and the numbers reflected it. But this doesn't mean they didn't experience any obstacles during one of their most successful years. Despite starting the year off strong by dropping the Queen Street West anthem, Casper was hit with legal trouble two months later. On April 22nd, a 911 call about a male with a gun was received. Although the description of this male included that he was white and was known as Jacob, which Casper is neither of the two, a witness who was later interviewed linked Casper running in the location of the shooting at the relevant time and while in the company of a man by the name of Jacob Gonzalez, who was known to police. There was no follow-up to that particular investigation, but a little over a week later on April 30th, Casper was stopped by police, who believed he was breaching a house arrest condition. Casper was released when police discovered the conditions were no longer valid. A few weeks after that, Toronto police executed another search warrant at the 150 Dan Lecky Way residence, still believing Casper and K Money were using it as a stash house. Inside the residence, there was no sign of K Money, but they did find Casper, his pregnant girlfriend, four cell phones, five digital scales, a 45 caliber semi-automatic firearm, and a large quantity of illegal drugs. The 45 caliber was found loaded inside a bedroom on a mattress in plain sight. Inside a closet of the bedroom was 116 grams of a bagged up substance, $860 in cash, five rounds of 40 caliber ammunition, and a 9mm round laying loose on the floor. When searching the kitchen, officers found nearly $900 worth of cocaine, six grams of a white unknown powdery substance that was separated in two bags, and $1,000 worth of a morphine and fentanyl powder mixed substance. Casper was arrested and hit with a laundry list of charges, but was granted bail shortly after. Casper's legal troubles didn't end there. A month after his latest interaction with Toronto police, he was sued by Burberry. According to the rapper, Burberry representatives knocked on the front door of his mother's home and served her with papers, which were meant to be sent to him. The paper stated the luxury British clothing brand was ready to sue Casper if he didn't take down the music video for his song, Burberry Closet. They thought the music video was used to mislead consumers into believing that he was sponsored by them. However, in reality, Casper recorded the music video in good faith as he genuinely enjoyed their line of clothing. Actually, no, I was in jail at the time. I called my mom and she told me that um, some people from Burberry came to the crib or some shit and dropped off some papers about they're suing me or some shit. They're trying to, they're like, I have to remove the video or they're gonna bring me to court and this that cease and desist basically oh, cease and desist yeah so i'm just like what the fuck? fortunately burberry didn't take legal action but the fact that the european luxury brand reached out to a rising artist from toronto proves casper's influence was reaching international territory two months after the burberry incident k money was finally released from jail and went straight to dropping new music Ride was the first song he released since being freed, and it featured several notable bars aimed at a rival Regent Park gang known as Halal Gang. This wouldn't be the first time both crews went at each other's necks. If you paid close attention to the Burberry Closet video, you'll notice a familiar piece of jewelry hanging on Casper's neck. It's Smoke Dog's chain. In March of 2017, the Halal gang member was robbed by a man who claimed the chain was his. That man then sold it to Vanali Stacks, a known Project Original member and close affiliate of Casper. 
The chain then went on what the scene dubbed as the Greasy Neck Tour, in which several Regent Park rivals posted a picture of them wearing it and tossing it around. Ride earned an impressive 2.4 million views, but in typical older brother fashion, Casper had to one-up him. On September 1st, he dropped Freeze, which featured Top 5 who is currently awaiting trial facing a first-degree murder charge. Freeze became Casper's second certified gold record, but it definitely wasn't the last. The battle of who can drop the most hits in a single year didn't end there for the brothers, as K-Money went deep in his bag for this next banger. Released a week before his 18th birthday, K-Money dropped one of the most popular records in Toronto rap history. Come Outside turned up the streets of the six, earning more than a million views in less than two months and eventually its own platinum plaque. With their arsenal of hits, K-Money and Casper began performing at events across Canada. From Ottawa to Waterloo, the brothers were selling out venues to fans that screamed every word to their songs, but what really took them to the next level was when those same songs were played during NBA and NHL games. At this point, the duo was just about to break their underground rapper label and go mainstream, but as some of you may already know, when it comes to Toronto rappers there seems to be an agreement amongst them to crash out before they can even get the chance to. On November 23rd, 2017, just two months after Come Outside was released, a 17-year-old girl was seen in the company of K Money. The woman told officers she was coerced into the sex trade after her family was threatened. She further added K Money allegedly threatened her repeatedly using firearms and controlled her through violent sexual assaults. Fortunately, she was able to escape and contact police. K Money was charged with assault, sexual assault, forcible confinement, and failures to comply with probation. Following his arrest, a larger investigation was launched when a second teen victim came forward. She alleged she was forced into the sex trade by a man she met shortly after being kicked out of her home by her father. She worked in hotels in Brampton, Hamilton, and Toronto, charging $120 for half an hour and $220 for an hour. Over a six-week period, she made an estimated $20,000, of which her pimp pocketed $16,000. Subsequently, 21-year-old Dion Cuvali and 19-year-old Christos Shepard were arrested and hit with the same charges as K-Money, plus some. Luckily for K-Money, his charges were withdrawn by the Crown at his first court hearing after he paid a peace bond. According to K-Money's defense lawyer Jag Verk, he asserts his client was only arrested because he was targeted by Toronto police for being a successful rapper. Christos Shepard's charges were withdrawn as well, but on April 6th of this year, he was back in the news after Peel Region Police placed a warrant for his arrest when he breached his conditions. As of the making of this video, he is still on the run. When faced by the Crown, the so-called pimp, Dion Cuville wasn't as lucky. According to police, he was allegedly the ringleader of the human trafficking operation and was actually released from custody on similar charges mere weeks before being arrested for this incident. Dion was consequently sentenced to nine years in a federal penitentiary where he currently remains. 2017 didn't end the way Casper and K Money wanted to, but come spring of 2018, things only got worse when the Regent and Alexandra Park gang rivalry reached its boiling point. Well, Toronto police are warning the public about two shootings in Regent Park this week. Now, police have released this surveillance footage. It shows two men approaching another man on River Street near Girard just before 1 o'clock Wednesday morning. Now, one of the men can be seen pulling out a gun and appears to pull the trigger, but the gun doesn't fire. The two suspects then walk away. The second incident occurred just minutes later. Now, police say a 42-year-old man was standing near a corner store on River Street when he was approached by the same men. The suspects pull out guns and then chase him into the lobby of an apartment building on Oak Street where he was shot in the leg. He was taken to hospital and has since been released. Now, police are asking anybody with any information on the shootings to contact them. It all started on May 25th, 2018 at 12.43 a.m. when a man smoking a cigarette in Regent Park was approached by two men. One of the men wearing all white pointed a gun to the back of the unsuspecting man's head and pulled the trigger. Fortunately, the gun jammed. 
As the man heard the click of the trigger and faced them, the two suspects turned around and walked away. But approximately eight minutes after this incident, the gunmen are seen on camera walking past another man. The suspect in white turns toward the man standing near the entrance of a variety store near 175 River Street and pointed a gun at him. The man notices the gunman and runs into the lobby of an apartment building at 220 Oak Street, but not before being shot once. The two suspects are seen fleeing on foot immediately after the shooting. The victim was taken to hospital where he was treated and then released. It's rumored K Money and fellow Menace Gang affiliate and rapper J Money were arrested for the incident but were later cleared due to insufficient evidence. Although the rappers were deemed innocent in the court of law, fans were still doubtful, especially when J Money released the song, Get Shot. Coupled with lyrics that hinted at the River Street shooting, the song also features a snippet of a news report covering the incident. And they're feuding with uh, a rival gang uh, known as the Menace Gang. Uh, there were shootings that happened basically right where we're looking now. D Mark got the E. In this infrared security video, the assailant in flight saunters over to an unsuspecting man, puts a gun to his head, and pulls the trigger. You know how I rock gets shot. Broad day creeping in your hallway. It's time to ride a put away the bomb in. The chances of this being a coincidence is relatively low, especially when two days after the River Street shooting, Atkinson Co-op was hit with a hail of bullets, presumed to be at the hands of Halal Gang. This is when things really took a turn for the worst as P.O. would retaliate, marking the beginning of a cycle of deadly gun violence that nearly ended the careers of Casper and Kay Money. Police are investigating a shooting near Queen and Spadina. Let's get more details tonight. We're live to CB24's Kayla Williams. It's been several hours now. What have you learned, Kayla? Well, so far, Toronto Police, as well as the forensic investigation team, remain here on scene. Right behind me is where the shots were fired uh, about four hours ago. It happened just after 4 p.m. at Atkinson Housing Co-op at... Uh, as per Toronto Police, Atkinson Co-op was the target of constant gun violence throughout the month of May. This latest incident, however, set off Casper and K Money, who decided to retaliate. On May 28th, they gathered two noted Menace Gang members, Shaquem Anderson and Harlem Baldwin, better known by his rap name RK, and hopped into a rental car and drove to Regent Park where they believed their ops would be. Shaquem was the driver, Casper sat in the front passenger seat, while K Money and RK sat in the back, both armed with firearms. The men arrived at Regent Park, specifically the corner of Parliament and Dundas Street, at around 2.40 p.m. The streets were full of pedestrians at the time, but that clearly didn't deter Menace Gang from running down on their ops. Coincidentally, a plainclothes officer investigating gun violence in Regent Park witnessed the four men in the vehicle wearing disguises and put out a radio call asking his colleagues to watch for them. Moments later, he witnessed RK and K Money exit the car holding handguns and K Money discharge his gun, causing people to run for cover. Both men jumped back in the vehicle and they took off, with cops tracking it to the nearby intersection of Sherbourne and Shooter Street. Police cruisers surrounded the vehicle, but as officers swooped in to make the arrests, Shaquem threw the vehicle into reverse and crashed into a patrol car and a uniformed officer. What followed was a frantic pursuit that saw Shaquem speed away, fly through red lights, drive into oncoming traffic and sidewalks filled with pedestrians. The chase ended when he crashed into several garbage cans at the corner of Dundas and Mutual Street. The vehicle was too badly damaged to keep going, so everyone fled on foot, leaving their weapons behind. RK was the first to be captured, but seconds later a patrol car's dash cam caught the moment Casper and K Money ran through a co-op unit on 88 Mutual Street, where officers were waiting for them on the other end. Realizing there was no escape, the brothers surrendered. Shaquem was the last to be taken down. CCTV caught him jumping over a fence and into an active construction pit. He was eventually found and captured by police, officially marking the end of the chase. The four men were taken to 51 Division headquarters and hit with a combined total of 97 charges. They appeared at their first hearing on June 20th. First up was Shaquem. By the grace of God, he was granted bail, but after the Crown successfully submitted an appeal to have his bail revoked, he was back in jail a month later on July 13th. Then came the brothers. The trial took nearly three months before a judge came with the final verdict. This was because the Crown presented nearly 40 pages worth of questionable evidence attempting to convince the judge Casper and K Money were gang members and the shooting was gang related. 
At one point, a veteran detective on the force tried to submit music lyrics as aggravating factors because when Casper was captured, he asked his arresting officer to quote, tell the Toronto star that Toronto rappers Casper and K Money were caught and that we never did it, but wanted the clout so we could drop a banger, which in fact was released the day after their arrest. The detective then proceeded to dissect the lyrics to the following song as well as K Money's hit record, Come Outside. Things only got stranger when the detective presented the judge with an urban dictionary definition of menace gang, in which it describes Casper as quote a sexy ass man in menace gang. Trial then concluded with a summary of an interview Casper and K Money conducted with media network We Love Hip Hop, in which they were quoted saying we rap what we live. In the end, none of the evidence brought by the detective were accepted and the defense successfully argued the shooting was an isolated incident and not gang related. In 2019, all four men were sentenced. Both Shaquem Anderson and RK received four years with two years time served and were released sometime in 2020. Casper was hit with 18 months, but was also given four years with two years time served for the raid on his apartment in which they found a loaded firearm and drug trafficking paraphernalia. For firing the single shot, K Money received the longest sentence of seven years with three years time served. While locked up, it's rumored both Casper and K Money were involved in several violent altercations, with Casper being stabbed at one point. It doesn't look like the situation was life-altering because Casper went to Instagram to announce he was released from prison on September 29th, 2021. Despite what he was convicted for, the scene welcomed him back with open arms, with Drake even reaching out to give him a few words of advice. It seems the boy's message resonated with Casper because he started posting throwback photos of himself playing basketball with other artists within the city. He also dedicated a post to the late Smoke Dog, who passed away in a shootout a month after Casper and K Money were arrested. In one message Casper wrote, Not gonna lie, on everything, I miss my rap arch nemesis. This was a banger, used to get vexed when I heard this and had to go make a next heater. Casper was willing to make amends with his past demons and steer clear from trouble. But that all changed once Six Buzz's co-founder Abraham was robbed of his chain and watches by Bleecker Street-based rapper Loco City and his crew while roaming the streets of downtown Toronto. A few days after the news broke of the robbery, Casper posted a video of himself wearing the chain. Underneath it was captioned, story is a little mixy today, so some downtown demons ran up on Six Buzz, beat him up and took his chain and watches. But you know me, downtown I have say, so I got him back his Six Buzz chain, but now he's mad at me because I don't want to backdoor my dogs. Please all blog pages, don't be like this clown. If you're a blog page, be a blog page, stop choosing sides in the city. Six Buzz, stop linking me. I am not backdooring no one and you are not getting your watches back. Fix up and I dare you to go on sick with me. I don't care who you think is writing. Six Buzz had enough of the online antics and decided to repurchase the same chain, but there was still bad blood between him and Casper. It started with a light back and forth on Instagram, then escalated into Six Buzz deleting the music video for Casper's first hit record, Dope Boy, which premiered on the Six Buzz YouTube channel. It's unclear where the two currently stand, especially with K Money shouting out Six Buzz upon his release from prison this year. K Money's return to the scene was highly anticipated, with many wondering if he was able to go back to his melodic ways, but fans were left highly disappointed with the release of his first song. Instead of the melodic vibe he was famed for, he switched it up with the overly saturated New York drill flow. Although he was heavily criticized, K Money didn't let the noise get to him. He decided to go back to his old flow a week later, this time featuring his brother Casper. This time around fans were pleased and the numbers reflected it. It's clear the scene was eagerly awaiting K Money's return, so let's see if he can keep the hype going. Both Casper and K Money have contributed to Toronto's vibrant and diverse hip hop scene for a near decade, achieving probably the most certified gold and platinum records out of anyone in the scene. They have solidified the city's reputation as a hub for emerging talent in the genre and with both of them now free. All we can hope for at this point is for them to stay out of the politics that got them locked up in the first place.